Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I have no financial disclosures, but only that I have been in practice for four years. Um, and so uh, you, this may become better from someone with more advice uh, and experience, but this will be our outline for today. Um, I think this is the most important thing, right? To know you're lost, you have to know it, right? <laughs> you have to know that you don't know where you are, and I think Winnie the Pooh says it best. So um, this is a patient of mine that I had a couple months ago, uh, healthy 68-year-old, hep B, uh, four centimeter lesion. I mean, this is, I was salivating to do a left lateral. Um, and I, I will say that I only do robotic, uh, minimally invasive uh, procedures at my institution. Um, and so I think, just like any long road trip, I think it's really important to have your own set of what you do to prepare for that. And, you know, I agree, MRI imaging, I think, is essential for liver resection. Um, I agree with either an MRCP or EOVIS, um, especially for biliary anatomy. Um, as far as operative planning, I, this is kind of my, it's my cup of tea right there. Um, and so I often tell the patients in clinic, like, this is plan A, plan B, plan C. And I, I find that if I have to do plan B or C, it, then the patient is aware. Um, and my husband was embarrassed for me for showing you this, but this is how I don't have 3D modeling in my institution, but every night I do a post-it note before my case. I lay out my ports. I like look at the anatomy and he's like, this is embarrassing, but you know what? This is what I do. Um, and I'll tell you, this patient had a left replaced. Um, she, what you may not notice from the scan is she has this giant left lateral section. She has like a beaver tail liver. Um, and so I had decided I was gonna do a mini gel port just so that I could get the specimen out easier. Um, but you know, how do you get lost in the liver? We'll come back to that case. Um, how do you get lost in the liver? And I was nerding out because I thought this looked like a portal triad. Um, so uh, I think surface anatomy is, is the easiest thing for especially minimally invasive because that's what we see. Um, as far as, you know, Cantley's line is very, you know, it's the gallbladder fossa. It goes right through, it makes this nice curved line. The falciform's there, the gallbladder's there, the falciform, or the gallbladder fossa's there. Those are the things that are really stable that you can know. It's the deep anatomy that's very difficult to predict. And I think, you know, deciding, I honestly think that, you know, standard rights, lefts, and left laterals are much easier than parenchymal sparing resections. Um, and I, I'll go over that a little bit, and, but, you know, the problem is, is we alter the surface anatomy. And so, you know, this is a patient of mine, like my, I was like five months into my first career, like my, my career, and um, it was the COVID. And so I ended up, I, I did some Y90 and I didn't get the hypertrophy I wanted. I was a little gun shy to do a central hepatectomy, to be honest. And so I didn't get the hypertrophy I wanted. I did a, a hepatic vein and portal vein embo, and then I did a right triseg uh, later. But you can see that the anatomy is grossly distorted when you use portal vein and hepatic vein embolization. And I think that can be really confusing, especially mentally invasively. Biliary anatomy, it honestly scares me. <laughs> so I do get the MRI all the time um, because for some reason type 3A, it's 20% of the time. You're gonna get this right posterior coming off the left and if you're doing this left hepatectomy, you know, you could hose um, this right posterior. And as we just talked about in the last session, if you were here, you know, I, I often think that when you're, you're coming through the liver, it's visual misperception. Um, and the cholecystectomy data has really shown that. And honestly, the hardest part of coming through like a big piece of liver is getting off plane in the sense of you're either skiving in or you're skiving out. I think we often will use, um, you know, stay sutures to pull the liver one way or the other. And if you pull too hard, you're gonna go one way or the other. And so, Unlike, you know, what's interesting in the data for cholecystectomy is that regardless of your experience, um, it was visual misperception. I do think that there is some experience uh, coming through the liver parenchyma that gives you an advantage with experience, though. Um, I did uh, borrow this slide. I recently went to AHPBA, and I thought this was a fascinating slide of CT uh, reconstruction of the liver in the sense of when you look at an open person on the CT scan, and then you look at the pneumoperitoneum, you can see that the liver actually folds down. And so you're actually going to have to lift the liver to get that same view as you do as an open surgeon. Um, and I, I found this very fascinating. 
Um, so you're either lost or you're very lost, and hopefully uh, you're now somewhere in the between. Um, so as we've already talked about, I have the four Ps, Pringle access, pneumoperitoneum, pressure, and preparation. I always Pringle. I may never, I may not use it, but I, it's a five millimeter port, and I think those are forgivable. Um, and so I use a five millimeter port. I use a red rubber. It's always there in case I need it, and I never regret having it uh, is really the, the truth. Um, and then I find that, you know, when you get into those hepatic veins, because that's like when you're lost and it's bleeding, it's... Uh, it's like a snowstorm, right? And so I often find if you just lift up, like especially the middle veins bleeding, if you lift up from underneath with the pneumoperitoneum, you often will get some sort of control where you can get a clip on. Um, and that can really help you get back on plane. Um, Dr. Conrad and his... Uh, his group have really studied uh, anatomy very intensely. And I think most of us in the room know that going from the periphery is less, the periphery has lots of things that you can go through in a much more brazen fashion. But when you get to that central zone, that's really when you're in risk for uh, major bleeding or injury to the portal triad. I, I love this slide, and this is again from his group, but the middle vein can either be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. Um, middle vein bleeding is like the worst, but it can also be very helpful to let you know where you are in the liver. They have found that this is one of the most consistent structures looking at lots of people over a lot of time. And so you can know if you're on the right or the left side of the middle vein to have an idea. They also know that the portal confluence and the middle vein are exactly about 1.8 centimeters away from each other. Um, and it's very consistent throughout uh, populations of people. Um, interoperative ultrasound is essential. You need to be very adept in it because it will get you out of trouble. I often, if I, especially when I'm transecting and you're midway through the, the liver, I will, especially open, I find it more helpful, is putting a bunch of water in so you can actually see the transection zone with your ultrasound. Sometimes minimally invasive, I get frustrated because then the water continues to come back through as you're going through the liver. Um, but it, it is something that I will use as a backup plan. Um, I also think that margin status, I use the end of the ultrasound to mark my margins for parenchymal sparing resections. And that's because objects are always closer than they appear. Early in my career, I would always get a positive margin. I'd be so irritated by that because I always send it for pathology. And I started uh, marking it very consistently with the probe. Um, and that's really helped decrease my positive margin. Um, and so I, I think that's very helpful. Um, I also think, again, I think parenchymal sparing resections are extremely difficult. Um, and the reason is, is because it requires this 3D spatial anatomy, and you may not see the lesion on the periphery. You may not have the surface anatomy. And so, like, this is a patient I did about a month ago. You can see just how blunted her edges of her liver are. Like, this is a very steatotic liver. Um, and, you know, it's four centimeters. I can see it on the surface, but that's a big chunk of liver to come through. Um, and so I think just knowing what you're, you're getting yourself into is very important. Um, I think cholangiogram can be very helpful, but also ICG is uh, also very helpful, especially with Firefly, with uh, the robot. Um, if you're doing it the day of, you need to give it prior to the procedure. Um, but what I actually am very interested in is uh, our colleagues in the uh, Asia have really been utilizing ICG for liver function, and they usually give it about 14 days prior to surgery. And now they're usually using it to utilize uh, the tumor. So the A, there is hepatocellular carcinoma that's well differentiated at the time of surgery. B is a moderately differentiated, and then C is a cholangiocarcinoma. And this would also be the way that a col uh, col uh, a colorectal liver met would look. And so you can imagine in a steatotic liver, it can be difficult to, to see a lesion with ultrasound. And so I can see how this could be very helpful. Um, so my case, what happened? So I had come through the liver. What I didn't recognize was how exophytic the lesion actually was and how it was perfectly aligned with the IVC. And you know, probably I had a poor, pla uh, poor placement of a port but I could never get around the lesion in order to have good visualization of the left hepatic vein. Um, and so I just decided to, make, to open because I was struggling and, uh, but at the time, you know, I just, you know, I think that good, good measures go and, you know, the goal was to do this robotically, but I opened. And I think earlier in my career, I would have seen this as a total defeat, but, you know, 
it happens. And I think it, it, I learned a lot from it and it's okay. So where are we going? And I think this is the future. And uh, I think it's on the press up. Uh, it's gonna be here. Digital imaging and communication in medicine. They take a CT image prior uh, to the operation uh, the, and they place it interoperatively onto the robotic format. I think the problem right now is like we, we mobilize the liver a lot and how do you take a static image and keep it moving? Uh, but I think this is the future. So I appreciate it.